This is the specific case of what would be called the cardioid. So if we see this now, we now have a picture of what happens with this geometric form and movement. What happens when the cusp <coughs> moves? So here we see the cusp at the center, and now it moves up higher, it's right there. And now it comes right to the edge of the circle, and that's the heart shape, the cardioid. And then an instant later, it's just moved a little bit outside the circle, and we see that loop. And then here, can you see from the back? Yeah? And then here, the loop gets bigger. In fact, the greatest challenge as a teacher is making sure the students, my tendency is to make too big of a circle, which I'm afraid I may have done. It's always surprising how big the, the form ends up as that, as that cusp moves outside the circle. So here's this idea right now of this geometric form in movement. What I'd like to do now is suggest um, another way, and we're going to see two other things here. Um, we talked, we spoke just a minute ago um, about theorems, and certainly one of the most well-known theorem. What theorem do you think I'm trying to, that I'll be talking about in a moment, do you think? A triangle, and the theorem I'm going to emphasize right now is the angles inside of a triangle add to 300, oh, sorry, try that again, add to 180 degrees. Three angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. So how can we actually prove this. I'm going to talk more about proofs in a little bit, but right now I'm just going to show this. Two different ways that are quite imaginative, I would say, for in this case, and I'd probably do this in about seventh grade, to show how do we know this. Well, we do know, and we have an experience of 180 degrees. If I turn 180 degrees, I notice that that's really in a straight line. If I'm driving down the road, I turn 180 degrees, I drive back, I'm going on that same straight line. So how is it that I can show that these three angles will add to 180 degrees? Well, something that I would do again in seventh grade is I'd have them actually do this and we'd actually tear it. So there's one of the angles there, placed very nicely. And now I'm going to take another of the angles in the triangle here and tear that off. And I'm going to place it tip to tip. So there's a second one. And now I just have to take the last one remaining here. And I place it there. And again, as a proof, this is a proof for a seventh grader. Yay. And we see there it is. The three angles here form. And of course, the nice thing to do here is to have all the students do a different shaped triangle. And then they can all see, no matter what triangle we had, we get this idea of forming a straight line. Now, in a 10th grader, this wouldn't work. A 10th grader would look at that and go, oh, come on, how do I know that it's exactly 180 degrees? But that's a 10th grader. Right? For the 7th grader, this is a nice way to do it. I'm going to show you another way to do this in a moment, which brings about this idea of geometric form and movement. And the question was, what's the definition of a limousine? And I wouldn't want to define it, I'd want to characterize it. And so, so through all these drawings and all the different things, they very clearly see what a limousine actually is. Of course, in 12th grade, we actually worked with limousines and the like as we were doing polar graphing. And we were actually doing it on the computer and seeing the whole thing in transformation in a very different way. Uh, but that's a, a whole different thing there. So what I'm going to do now, eh, go without the ruler here. Let's start with the same triangle that I had. And what I want to do again is to show I want to show the same thing that the three angles inside of a triangle add to 180. I'm going to start out with a little bit different colors. So I simply want to show for any triangle that the blue, the purple, and the orange angles will add to 180 degrees. I extended the lines in the triangle for a real purpose, and that is the students 
before I do this, and this would be in, again, seventh grade, we'd recognize that these two angles, which are called vertical angles, or the really opposite angles, are equal. This angle also is equal to this one. And the two blues are equal, the two oranges are equal, and two purples are equal. And so now what we're going to do is simply in our imagination, we're going to bring this form into movement in the following way. I want to keep this line right where it is. I want to keep this line right where it is. And I'm simply going to take the bottom line and I'm going to slide it upwards. And I'm going to freeze it when the bottom line moves from here up to here. Can you see what's going to happen as I do that? Yeah? I'll do it actually in, um, I think we can just do it in two steps. So here it is. If I do that properly, So this original blue angle has stayed where it is. And its opposite angle is here. So the triangle has shrunk. I'm sure you can see that. The triangle is getting smaller as I move it up. And then in a way it's become infinitely small. You can say that. The orange. is here, and the purple is right here. And what do we see? You can just take the straight line here. Actually, you can take any line if you want, can't you? Look at this line right here. Orange, blue, and purple form a straight line. Now look at this line here. Orange, purple, and blue form a straight line, or the horizontal line on top. Blue, orange, and purple all form a straight line. And this is an imaginative, what I would call a movement, visual proof of the fact that in any triangle, the three angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. A very appropriate proof, I think, a visual, imaginative proof for a seventh grader. We'll return to proofs in a little bit, but for now I'd like to start on another exercise. So... Um, in sixth grade, we start with this idea of geometric drawing and constructions. So geometric drawing, you just did a drawing right now for the, with the limousine. A very interesting drawing that actually required no ruler or straight edge at all, just a compass. That's all you had to do. Most of them require a little bit of each. So now, what we're going to do, and what we do in sixth grade, is we introduce the whole idea of a construction, a Euclidean construction. Now this is something we analyzed much more in 10th grade, I would say. And to a large degree, this was something of a game for the ancient Greeks. It was a game, it was a mental exercise, it was a puzzle. And that is, what can I do, what sort of drawings can I make if all I have is a compass and a straight edge? I want to point out that this technically isn't a straight edge because it has measurements on it. This is a ruler that can measure distances. But we'll create, we'll treat this like a straight edge, and all we will do is just draw straight lines with it. We won't measure any lines. Does that make sense? So those are the two instruments that you can use. What are you allowed to do with this? Draw a straight line connecting two points. So what I can do is put one end on one point, one on the other, and draw a straight line. Or maybe the two points are here, and draw a straight line. I can use this to draw a line between two points. That's it. What are the rules surrounding this? What can I do with this? I can put the needle on one point. I can extend it if I want. Weren't we just doing that? We would extend it to another point, measure it, and then we would draw a part of a circle. That's all that we can do. So one of the, um, and then there are several. So we asked ourselves the question, what is it that's possible to do with just these two tools. Surprisingly enough, there are many things that we can do. I'll show you a couple of simple things. If I happen to start with an angle, what degree measure would you say that might be? 60. Uh, 
I'd say around 50-ish, something like that sounds about right. Okay, 50 degrees perhaps. What I can do with a compass and a straight edge is I can actually bisect the angle. However many degrees this is, of course, I'm not going to measure it, but I am simply going to take however many degrees this is and I'm going to cut it exactly in half. How many people remember doing this in school? I don't. I never did anything. And I know about maybe, generally speaking, about I think half people did. Yeah? Um, this is one of the things that I think has been neglected from our, our education. It's been tossed out. So here we go. To bisect this angle, I'm just going to go like this. So the compass was set at anything. I come over here. I set it again. And I've achieved a little X. Now all I have to do is connect the X with the center of the original angle. I'll do a little dotted line so you can see it. There it is. Theoretically, this should be exactly perfect. If this had been 50 degrees, this angle would be 25 and that would be 25. Or if it had been 48 degrees instead, it would be 24 and 24. Yeah. So that's one thing we can do. I'll show you one more and then I'll give you a task. Let's take a line here and let's draw a perpendicular line through this point. Now, of course, the easy thing would, would be to get out a right triangle and to just do it like this and you'd be done. But that's not very interesting, is it? So this is supposed to be a little bit of a puzzle. And that's why we're not allowed to measure, we're not allowed to use something that measures a right angle, 90 degrees essentially. What I have to do is just use a compass and a straight edge. So here's one possible way to do it, is I set the compass so it's a little bigger than it, it can reach the line quite easily. I just go like this. So I set it right there and I just swung it around. I got two points of intersection. And now, and I actually could enlarge the compass or shrink it, but I have to have the same compass setting from these two points that I'm going right now. So I go here, I go here, and so there it is. I set my compass needle here and here, and I have a little X, and once again, I'm going to use that X to draw a line. And now I have a new line that is perpendicular to the line that I started with, and through the point right here that I was given. So those are two things. I just showed two constructions. One was bisecting an angle, and the other is constructing a perpendicular line. So the task that I give to you, and you know, I, this is one of those little puzzles that you could give children at many ages. I've seen it done actually as early as sixth grade. I do it with my 10th grade class when I teach the Greek geometry uh, main lesson. But if you flip the Limasson page that you have, and if you look over there, it says finding the center of a circle. So that is your task, to find the center of a circle.